Hi, I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. Some homeowners don't really need additional living space. They just need to improve the space they have. We're right in the middle of a renovation that's going to make a big difference in this house. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. The voice of home improvement with projects, tips, and ideas to help you improve your home. As you can see, we're well underway with this interior renovation. And one of the first things the homeowners wanted to do is to remove the old brick floor originally in the foyer. It's kind of out of date, but we'll be replacing it and this section of hardwood with a new ceramic tile extending from the front door all the way to this opening. Now, there's a lot of hardwood floor in this house, and we'll be matching that look in this room by installing new hardwood floor, then refinishing all of it so that it's the same exact stained color. Now, this room was the classic den of the 70s, real dark and gloomy. We're fixing that by removing all of the old dark paneling that previously had been painted to try to brighten it up, but we'll be brightening it up by replacing it all with drywall and painting it with a lighter color. We'll also enhance the light in this room by installing a cased opening to really benefit from the bright room that's at the front of the house. Now another thing that can really date a house is the type of fireplace you have. Here the fireplace hearth extended all the way across the room, really dominated a lot of the space in this room. We'll be modernizing that and making a big difference in the overall look of this room. Now these are projects that really don't cost a lot of money that can make such a difference in the look of your home. And we'll be completely finished with this within this show. And along the way we have some other great hints for you that you can use around your home. Stay with us. I guess you can see there's a lot going on with this interior renovation. Now the den we had here before was fairly dark and very out of date and really needed our help. The only thing the owners really did love was the big built-in bookcase on the end of the room, so it stays. The fireplace they liked, but it needed some changes to achieve the look the owners wanted for this room. The asymmetrical hearth not only looked odd, but it also wasted valuable floor space in the room. And speaking of floor space, the parquet flooring in the den also didn't achieve the look these owners wanted, nor was it in very good shape. There were three different types of flooring in the areas we're renovating. Parquet in the den, brick and tongue and groove hardwood in the entry, and more hardwood in the living room. After renovation, the old living room will become the dining room with plenty of room to add a wet bar and a nice chandelier. The hardwood floors will stay and so will this great curved front window that provides so much natural light to the house. Since the front of the house is only getting minor changes, our demolition started in the back where there was plenty to be done. The trim around the edges of the paneling went first, which made removing the paneling itself much easier. You can see that this type of demolition makes a big mess, so it's always a good idea, if at all possible, to lump several jobs together like we're doing here. While we have this room torn apart, we'll take care of all of the issues the owners had with the space. In addition to getting rid of the decades old paneling, we removed the unnecessary portion of the fireplace hearth to make it more symmetrical. This was a bit more labor intensive than the paneling, but just as necessary to create the blank canvas we need to start over. When we removed all of the paneling, we found these one by six furring strips that were originally nailed to the studs by the original builder. Now he did this so that when he installed the paneling, he'd have a lot of surface to nail it off to. It's really not needed for any drywall, so we'll be removing it all on this wall. One reason is that a standard wall thickness is three and a half. This adds three quarters of an inch to it. So if we left it up, we would have to fur out all around the adjacent cased opening. Now on the other walls, they won't affect anything so we'll just leave it up. But the biggest difference has been this, the new six-foot cased opening that's been completely framed. And you know, I get asked all the time about how hard is it to remove a wall in a house or a section of a wall like this. Well, it depends on what type of wall it is, the hardest load-bearing walls. And this particular wall runs all the way through the center of the house. And most of the time, when you have a situation like that, it will be a load-bearing wall. Let me show you how we were able to take out this six-foot section. First of all, the studs that were here originally every 16 inches 
We're there to support all of the load we have above, and that includes the ceiling joists from each room that lace together and sit right on top of the wall. Then above that, you have vertical support that goes up to the roof itself to support that. Now, by removing this wall section, you got to substitute that load-bearing area with something. That's what this is all about. This is what we call a sandwich beam. We have a 2x12 on this side, a 2x12 on the other side with a piece of half inch plywood sandwiched between. Now sandwiching plywood in like this makes it a lot stronger than no plywood at all. Plus it provides the, the spacing that we need to get out to a three and a half inch wall. Now to support that we have several pieces of wood here. First of all, these two are called pack studs that fit directly under the beam. The next one is a king pack or a king stud that goes all the way up to the, the double plate that we have up above it there. So with this together with this, we're not having to worry about any load bearing aspect of it. That'll be strong enough. And you know, it's going to make such a difference when we have all of this put together. And with this being a formal dining room once we complete it, and then this being the living room, everybody can kind of flow together and it opens it up more like a modern floor plan because a lot of older houses have the different little rooms. This can make such a difference. Hey, next is our simple solution, and then we'll come back and show you more of this interior renovation. It's time for this week's Simple Solution from home repair expert, Joe Truini. Pressure treated lumber is wood like pine or fir that has been injected with a preservative in order to make it last a long time on projects like fencing or decks and we're putting some fence posts down. Well in this case when you're cutting a large piece of timber like this the pressure treated chemicals don't usually soak all the way to the center of the, of the lumber which is where you need the protection the most especially when it's going to be buried in the ground like this one. So what I'm going to do is treat it with some preservatives. Now in this case we're using a, a wood preservative specifically designed for pressure treated lumber. It even has the green color just it has like a our green treated tint, wood. Right, so it matches the, the preservative color. Hand me that can please. Okay. So what I did is I poured some into this can. I'm using a nice big brush. I'm just going to apply it right to the end. Now you notice because this is end grain, it's like a sponge. It really soaks it up so you can't put too much preservative. You want to just let it soak right in. Now Joe, I guess you could actually take the post and dip it right down into the material itself. Yeah, actually, Dan, that's the best way to do it. If you had the time, if you had time, you should take the post, cut it, and stand it up in a big bucket and leave it overnight and let it just soak up as much preservative as it can. And I guess knowing these are fence posts wouldn't be a bad idea to coat the outside um, at least as deep as it'll go into the ground. Right. The, the, any area above the ground is already protected with the with just the treatment that it gets mm -hmm. from the factory. But yeah, anything below ground, a little extra preservative will help it last even longer. There are a number of ways you can really save some money on an interior renovation. The first thing you need to think about is when you're in the demolition or tear out stage, tear out as little as you have to. You'd be surprised how electricians and plumbers can route things inside existing walls. That'll save you money on the repair of the drywall. Also, when you are removing things, make sure you take good care of them because you can reuse them. This is a great example here. I mean, look at the quality of this door. It's a louvered door and um, it's in great shape, even has a pretty good paint job on it. I priced one just like this recently, it was over $300. We plan on using that somewhere else in the project. Also, we've taken a lot of care in removing all of the base molding from this room. You can see some of it here, and we're going to remove all of the nails so that we can save it, stack it, and use it um, when we start retrimming. The thing about some types of molding like this, it's kind of hard to find, and by using the same molding, we're able to match the same molding that's in the rest of the house, so that consistency is very important. Now another thing, we had a great electrician that worked with us, and you can see we have um, two recessed cans, uh, light cans on this side of the room and two more on that side, and all of these were installed without disturbing any of the drywall. Now the way they were able to do it is they cut a real precise hole, then they used a remodeled can housing that had an arm that they positioned up in the hole and tightening it um, secured it between the two ceiling joists. And as you can see, it's in great shape and there's no, nothing that's needed here at all except maybe a fresh paint job. Now, our plumber also did a great job in routing the water lines and drain line that we needed for the wet bar that'll be positioned on this wall with just minimal amount of damage. And again, our electrician routed the lines that we needed for the under counter lights from the attic right down the wall 
came right out of the small hole, so no repairs are needed there. Now at this point in this room, we're ready to reinstall the trim, and the same is true for the adjacent den. In the old den, which is becoming a formal living room, we've opted to use all new material for the trim because so much has changed. We've replaced the window that was here with a larger one so that the old trim pieces wouldn't be the right size, and piecing them together would be fairly difficult to disguise. The same is true for the case molding around this new set of French doors we've installed. However, in a situation like this, if you limit your use of new trim material to a single room, any visible difference from the old trim won't be evident because the new trim and old trim aren't side by side to be compared. With the trim in place, everything is ready for a fresh coat of paint. Before they started with the top coats, the painters primed everything so that there would be no shade variation between areas that had new drywall, which is white, and areas that were previously painted with another color. We've updated every other surface and now it's time for the floor. Roberto and Terry, our floor installers, start laying out the new wood at the point where the two rooms meet. This lets them be sure of a good tie-in before working their way across the space towards the fireplace. Well, what a great transition between the old and the new. Once all of this is sanded, no one will know that we established a new case opening here. Now, Roberta and Terry have been working only just today in installing all of the hardwood, and what they're installing is a three-quarter inch quarter sawn oak. Now, this is going down pretty easily with the pneumatic nailer, and they'll let it sit for a couple weeks after they complete this last bit of nailing and the installation of the wood to allow it to acclimate a bit before any sanding takes place. Now, the sanding will take place on not only the old, but also the new to smooth everything out. On the old, it's to remove the original finish, then everything will be stained to match. And when we come back after our best new product segment, we'll show you a little bit about that process, also the installation of the ceramic in our foyer area and the wet bar. Stay with us. Let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. There are many products that are available to repair holes in walls and ceilings. I found a product that makes it just about as easy as it gets, and it's extremely versatile because this kit will repair holes in plaster, stucco, and drywall. It's from Hyde, and it's called the Wet and Set Wall and Ceiling Repair Patch. Here's how it works. First, you cut the patch size that you need to overlap the damaged area by approximately an inch. Then, fill a pan with warm water, and in one motion, dip the patch into the water and remove it immediately. After that, let all the excess water just drip off. Then, place the patch over the damaged area and smooth the patch with your fingers so that it spreads evenly and holds tightly to the damaged area. Then, allow around 30 minutes to dry. Now, you can accelerate that if you want by using a blow dryer. That'll speed up that process considerably. After that, apply patching or joint compound to the patch and the surrounding area. Let it dry, sand and apply a second coat if needed. Then sand until it's completely smooth. After that, you need to get your touch-up paint and apply two coats of paint over the damaged area. Then you'll be the hero around your house. The installation of our tile in our foyer is completely finished and now the grout is taking place. Now one of the advantages of this type of tile, which is a travertine tile, is that you don't have to have such large grout joints. This one is just about an eighth of an inch some tiles require you to go up to three-eighths or even as much as a half-inch sometimes. And the more grout you have, the more maintenance involved in a tile floor like this. So this is perfect for a high traffic area like a foyer. Now speaking of floors, our hardwood floor has been completely installed. It's been down for about 10 days, so it's acclimated well to this um, air-conditioned space. So it won't be long we'll be able to start the refinishing process. Now if you remember this part of our interior renovation, you may remember that originally the brick hearth on the fireplace extended all the way over to the corner. We had a shorter window here, but by removing this, you can see the repairs we did here on the corner to cap this off. After this dries a little more, we'll be able to paint all of this for it to match. Then we installed this big nice window and our cabinet maker did a great job in matching the style of the existing doors on the cabinet. After that's painted, it'll look like it's always been there. Now in the front part of this interior renovation, a lot of entertaining is going to take place. The homeowners plan on using this as a dining room, and on this end, nice looking wet bar. The cabinets were installed just a few days ago, and our granite countertop came in right after that. And while they were here, they installed the stainless steel little bar sink here, a fairly deep one, and it's an under counter mounted bowl, which I love that type of 
um, mounting because see, when you're cleaning the counter, you can wipe everything right in. No little ring that you have to deal with around the top of it. Now also the plumber will install the faucet here as well as a refrigerator here after the floors are refinished. Well that's our next step, refinishing the floors, which may prove to be the messiest part of this job, but also it'll make more of a difference than anything else we've done to these rooms. Roberto and Terry are back to handle the refinishing chores and they have some heavy duty tools to help get the job done. Roberto is using a massive belt sander to cover the wide open spaces of the rooms while Terry is operating a large disc sander to get up against the walls and into the corners. These tools are powerful and require a steady hand to be sure that they don't do irreversible damage to the floor. In fact, the belt sander has so much horsepower that Roberto has attached himself to it with a safety belt so that it doesn't get away from him. Next, the guys bring in a rotary buffing machine fitted with a finer screen to complete the final sanding before a thorough sweeping to get up all the dust. The stain we're using here is being hand applied and hand rubbed so that the guys can be sure that the color is consistent throughout the entire space. The stain really brings the wood to life and the three coats of clear sealer really make it shine. I love the color of the finished hardwood floor and it complements our new travertine tile and our remodeled foyer very, very nicely. Now something else that blends together very well is our 40 year old oak floor with our two week old oak floor. The refinishers did a great job on blending the old and the new. Now a hardwood floor is a fairly durable floor, but to ensure that it was as hard and as sealed as it should be, we kept everybody out of this area for the three days after the last coat was applied. Then even now we're suggesting to the homeowners socks only over the next few days while they're bringing in all of their furnishings. Now, we really made a big difference in this whole interior area, and it didn't cost a lot of money. It didn't really take a lot of time. It made such a big impact, and we'll show you where we started on this project right after our Around the Yard. Let's head outside for Around the Yard with lawn and garden expert Tricia Craven Worley. So you're telling me this whole thing is one rose bush? It is, Danny, and actually it was here when we bought the house, so I estimate this is about 40 to 50 years old, if not older. Wow, it's just massive. Now, as far as um, your approach on pruning something like this, how does it differ from a traditional rose bush? Well, uh, this is a climbing rose, and so it has a totally different approach as, as, for example, a hybrid tea rose that you would find growing in the, in the ground where right. you cut it all the way back after its season. Now, with a climbing rose, you want to make sure that you don't cut it all the way back because you will definitely kill it. Oh, and I've seen that happen before. We have some uh, canes down here that are pretty strong, and there's a new one coming up over by you. Uh -huh. And that's a good sign, means the, the uh, vine is still in good shape. But what I'm trying to do is uh, just around February is a, is a good time to be doing this. And I'm cutting off the laterals, and I'm trying to cut off last year's growth mm -hmm. so that new growth will come. I see. I guess in keeping it against the wall, you cutting these outer branches off will, will allow it to stay more vertical. That's right. And with a climbing rose, that's another thing you're doing is grooming it, uh -huh. getting it into the shape that you want it to be. Okay. Now, these, uh, is this where the rose comes out? Oh, no, no. Actually, those are rose hips, and I'm going to be taking those off. Those are from last year's growth, and actually there are seeds in it that can make uh, new roses for oh, someone else. Well, great. Well, let me see the pruners, and okay. I'll help you out on this Thanks. side. This interior renovation project is completely finished and the homeowners have really been busy putting the finishing touches on it. Boy, this looks a lot different than it did before. The old den was dated with its awkward fireplace and paneled walls and the living room needed some changes to become the dining room the owners wanted. We've opened up the spaces with a cased opening between the rooms and transformed the old living room into a great dining room complete with a wet bar. The travertine floor looks great in the entryway and the changes to the fireplace have improved the new living room immensely. A fresh coat of paint for the built-in bookcase and new hardwood floors also helped the room make the transition from a dated den to a comfortable living room. We've upgraded the interior areas of this home while staying with a very traditional style. I hope you enjoyed the transformation. I'm Danny Lippard. Join us again next week here on Today's Homeowner.
Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.